and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching Season 1, Episode 6 of The Haunting of Bly Manor. And this episode is called The Jolly Corner. And I've got a feeling it's not going to be jolly at all. I think they're winding me up. Uh, <clears throat> I should say from the outset, I've got horrible allergies today. Um, lots of sniffing, a red nose and itchy eyes. So... <laughs> I already look like I just continued from the last video, but it's actually been about, I don't know, what, four or five days or something like that. I think I watched it at the weekend. Um, oh God, what to say? This is rough. I'm having to stop every two minutes to, to make my nose even redder. Um, but yes, I have tissues, I have coffee, I have my squash. So I think I'm fully prepared for this episode, or at least as prepared as I can be. Last episode remains my favorite episode of the series. Um, it's a competitor for my favorite episode of, of The Haunting as an anthology series. It is definitely one of my favorite episodes of television ever. Just, I'm actually blown away by how they managed to find an art artistic expression of denial that was so true to the actual lived experience of it both kind of in the, in terms of the emotion that it created but also it's it's bonded me to Hannah thoroughly um just an extraordinary performance as well um from from the actor just that um the bit where she lets out that howl of pain on the front lawn i think is probably going to stick with me forever just that guttural visceral agony wow um and if you actually watch and just really pay close attention to the way that she's interacting with owen in the scenes as well just watch her face and she is present and acting every second of it and it's so real it's just ugh, fucking glorious um, in terms of kind of <clears throat> my interpretation of what it means for the story and that kind of stuff, it hasn't changed massively since the episode. I do think that Viola, I do think it's very possible that Viola Lloyd is the lady in the lake. Um, I'm not sure whether she just crossed paths with Peter that night. It was just a coincidence or whether actually him attempting to steal what I assume was once her necklace actually triggered an event with her. The kids were also talking, well, Flora was talking about the others in the house have warned them to stay out of her way because she's dangerous. Who are those others and are we gonna meet them? Um, what is Hannah gonna do now that she knows that she's dead. Is she gonna be able to keep up appearances or is this all gonna come out? And how are the other characters gonna react? Are any of the others dead is, ob is an obvious question. I think I'd probably be more surprised if other characters were dead than if they weren't. But then, <clears throat> you know, I can see equally powerful narratives either way with that so whatever way that goes I've kind of not really got any skin in that game I'm still pretty sure that it's Jamie who's telling this story in 2007 that I'm quite sure about and there's still obviously a lot going on with other characters that we haven't kind of fully fleshed out yet we haven't seen any real background for Owen or Jamie we don't know what on earth Henry Wingrave like what happened to him what's his deal and one thought I had I think during the last episode but when I on the rewatch not 
when I was reacting to it was I wondered if it might be him making the calls to the house because like as a way of kind of almost anonymously reaching out because he can't actually reach out that was one thought I had about that I'm pretty sure the phone calls are going to be relevant anyway and that's kind of one of the few ways I felt like it might be um I'm still interested in knowing what actually happened to Charlotte and Dominic Wingrave and does it have any relevance to the main narrative of the story? Is the story that we have about them true? Did they die abroad? You know, given given how much um, it's clear that things are not as they seem at Bly Manor, I think everything is legitimately at this point up for questioning. So I question that. Um, I think that's it for now. So without further ado, let's have it. I feel like it'd be really cool if Flora was like a 400 year old spirit just governing the house herself. Cause she seems so wizened for such a little person. Here we go. Ooh. Don't scare me straight off the bat. Oh, hello, Henry. The post is here. Thank you. You're welcome. What's that about? Day and night, tucked away in his work. Wow. In his nightly routine. Until he was entombed in it until there was no room left inside God. of him for anything else. Except booze. Until he felt. Miss Clayton phoned. She's a bit concerned. Some things you may want to hear about. No need. I'm happy the children are well. <sighs> of course. <gasps> oh shit! Scotch or bourbon tonight? He's there, or is it ice or worm? Would this have been his brother? Was this, would the, yeah, would this have been Dominic's office? Oh, yes! That prick is there, I can feel, I can feel him. Oh, cock off. What the fuck was that? Too late? You're on time. I'm on time. Yeah, she's close, but not yet. Thank God for that. Charlotte, I'm here! I, I don't think she cares much about that right now, to be honest. <laughs> she's early. She's quite early. It happens, doesn't it? This is yours. I'm yes. here, darling. In the statue garden. Those are the gym jams she was wearing when she saw um, Becca in the lake. Danny Gar. Don't usually see you this side of the 8 a.m. Uh, yeah. Well, I I knew. Um, I thought I'd bring you some coffee. <laughs> you yanks in your coffee. <laughs> you might like it. Cheers. Cheers. Adorable. <laughs> I'm not the best at coffee either. <laughs> I seem to see less and less of Hannah. She just goes out, I guess. By herself. Sometimes I just turn around and, and she's gone. Oh. So you just got up with the sun and you're uh, tiptoeing around the kitchen making awful coffee by yourself. 
just to come say hi at six in the morning for no particular reason. Oh, come on. Poppins, you flirt. <laughs> I don't like the way we left it. And how did we leave it? Wrong. <laughs> I like you. I also like my life the way it is. Nice and boring. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to disrupt that. Gotta keep things proper boring. <laughs> haven't we? <laughs> Look, there's, there's a pub. And Bly, right? There is. You and me could get a boring old drink in a boring old pub and see where that takes us. You know I live above that pub, right? I told you that already, didn't I? Got a little flat <coughs> right above the boring little pub. Flora? Fuck it out. Flora! You don't feel good. with the touchy on the forehead. <gasps> Hello? Fuck off. <sighs> Piss off. Don't. Wait. What the shit? Fuck off! Did you hear me? No! And I was just saying good morning just now. Yes. And I, I just heard you say there was someone in your room. Come. Pause. Wait. So when he he gave Charlotte a look when she was going into you know when she was in labour on the bed, and I thought I did think to myself, hmm, what's that look about? That was an interesting exchange. Is is Flora his daughter? Oh my god. So he was. Oh god. Play. See! Quickly! There's something wrong with him. His face isn't finished. Oh no. It's the same as the lady in the lake. He doesn't even have a mouth. Well, I should think he would be a very good listener. And there's almost nothing more important than that in the friend. That's right. I had a friend when I was your age, too. In this house, in fact, he was a soldier. And I was very afraid of him. I saw him! Uh, he expected rather a lot from the police, if memory serves me correctly. <gasps> uh, he probably said him to have to go superior. Why is there a military person stood in the back of the fucking hallway? Until I gave him a story. This is strange. It is? I suppose it's because I'm too old, isn't it? Well, you should be five years old, in fact. You were five years old when this happened. So, why aren't I five years old? I'm not five years old. I'm eight years old. Why is my age all wrong? You know why, don't you? What? Because this is a memory. That's right. And touch away again in another memory. You have. This is happening more and more, and I'll be over as soon as I. Wake up. Wake up. Hey. Oh my god, not again. Hey, just... 
No, I can't. It's just not at all. I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a moment. No, it's all right. We, we, uh, <gasps> we just want to make sure that you're okay. Oh, that... What are we doing? I'd like to go back to sleep. But to dream. Not a memory. Dream this time. Oh, God. Okay. That poor freaking kid. It's Miss Clayton. Said Flora's been sleepwalking. And she's all right. I'm not sure. If she's all right, that's all. If she isn't? If she isn't, then why isn't she calling a bloody doctor? God, Henry. Have you seen that little boy again? Daddy says he's a type of mint. A fig mint. <laughs> <laughs> What's this then? Uh, hi. You're you're back. I am. Just for a bit. Why are you calling? I was. Uh, well, I've answered my own question actually in the time that we've been talking. Yeah. I've sorted it out. Wingrave and Wingrave. Yeah. <gasps> Don't know who you're trying to hide from. Might as well come in. What the fuck? Oh, she's likely asleep by now. You'd get the cook again. Or the housekeeper. Or that cute little American. The calls are spooking them. You know it. The receptionist could handle this. This and all his correspondence. You insist on handling it so that no one does. Because every time you send out a notice of death, the world where you can pretend your brother is still alive gets a little bit smaller, uh... doesn't it? Not pretending a fucking thing. God, I honestly thought it was Peter when that thing started off, but it's like his guilt. Poor thing must be exhausted. We we missed you this afternoon. Where'd you run off to? Oh, um, I'm not. Well, I suppose I was around. God, what's that say about me? I can can hardly remember this afternoon. She's the same tomorrow. I'm in a college actor. Yes, yes, that sounds about right. I called Henry, but he didn't call back. Henry's not exactly himself anymore. God, ever since Charlotte and Dominic went on that blasted trip, all three of them just... gone. I can't even look at Hannah now, I know. Taking me out here to kill me? Keep talking, I just might. It's possible in this house. It's a moonflower. Worth it. Is it? This plant only blooms two months a year. And only at night. In three weeks, this entire plant will be dead. That's a lot of work for a flower that only blooms once. It's what people feel like to me. So, I figured I'd save you some effort. So here you go, okay? Mm. One was Louise. Dad was Dennis. Dennis met Louise and she was 18. Here later, my brother, Denny. And me. Dad starts working in a coal mine. Louise is home with the kids. She's basically a kid herself. Kid with two kids and a husband 600 metres down. So she does what kids do. She plays. While she did whatever she could to feel alive, Finally, climbs back to the land of the living. They laugh at him. They laugh because the whole town knows that the new baby, my little brother Mikey, 
isn't his. Call a spade a spade, and they call me Mama Ho. Call the daughter one too. Wow. And he's 67, Louise Bolts. And I come home from school to find my key. Alone. Screaming his little head off. He's still a baby. And he doesn't understand what he's done wrong. I try and take care of him. I'm just a kid. Kids can't raise kids. They forget things. Special services gets involved and we split up. And it was foster care. Just a bunch of stale, perverted men with bitter wives, hoping to make a few quid by taking care of the local trash. I left for London pretty soon after that. And it's there I start gardening. But I fucking love it. Love it. You pour your love and your effort. You watch them grow. No one makes sense. Sometimes, once in a blue goddamn moon, I guess, someone like this moonflower just might be worth the effort. Like this moonflower. It's all its beauty lies, you know. The mortality of the thing. <laughs>